Hello and welcome to week five or module five of MFA 608. I am Jason Morgan. I am your professor, your instructor, your coach, your mentor, your cheerleader. Yes, I'm all those things because I want you all to do well. All right. Before we get to module five and all the fun that we're going to be having this week, I um, just wanted to take a, a moment to go over uh, just a concept and just as a reminder. So if we go to course menu, this is something we should be doing and you go to discussions. Okay. Because we're supposed to be doing this every module. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you get to class resources. This was introduced in module one, and it says it's module ten. So every every module we're supposed to kind of you know review and add stuff to this. So if you haven't been doing this, please do so because it is a graded assignment. Um, but one thing I wanted to point out specifically is one post that I did for you folks, which was MLA formatting, okay? Um, so as I was uh, grading um, some of the assignments, uh, you know, some people, they, they, they kind of did MLA formatting, they sort of did MLA formatting the way they wanted to. Um, you know, MLA formatting, Sentence for the MLA stands for the Modern Language Association. It's an association that get together and say, what are the rules we're going to follow when it comes to formatting papers? Okay, so these aren't arbitrary. They're not like you, what your personal preferences are, or anything like that. And um, they do update them over the years. So if you're, you know, if you did it a certain way a few years ago, and I'm saying, hey, you're doing it wrong, well, it's because you haven't been using the updated way. And so I have the information you need to on how to format a paper in MLA style. This walks you through step by step. This shows you how to do the works cited page, and this shows you how to do the in-text citations. Now, why I'm such a stickler with this is it's not really about MLA. I mean, yes, you need to know how to do MLA formatting, but more importantly, it's about following directions. And when you are working with a client or you're doing editing, you need to be very detail-oriented. If you can't follow the direction in, in the MLA style of how to put together the paper by following a video which shows you step by step, then I don't know if you're going to be detail oriented enough to really be that kind of editor. And I don't mean to be sound super critical, but it's like, oh, I, I'm not going to worry about the details. Well, that's kind of the whole point of what we're doing here, right? So imagine this MLA formatting is more of practicing following the details, okay? Okay, I hope we understand that. And uh, you know, unless it's just, you know, you completely blew it out, I won't mark you down too, you know, too poorly when it comes to MLA formatting, but it's still something that you should do. Okay, all right, well, let's, let's go ahead and say that we've done that. Now let's go ahead and get over to Module 5. Yay, Module 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the learning objectives. So this module's actually got some really cool practical things. Um, I, I like the practical things. I mean, sometimes we need to talk about the theoretical things, but this one's very practical in nature. So what we're going to do is we get to do an activity where we're assessing writing from the lens of a coach. And there's a kind of a fun activity that's involved in that. At least I, I think it's actually kind of fun. Um, and then we're going to be working on an assignment where we are, we, we've talked about our our philosophy and interests and specialty when it comes to coaching with our clients. Um, and so we're actually going to do an activity. It's actually a, kind of a paper sort of, uh, we'll call it a project um, where you're going to be doing this and you'll now this is a, an important one because as, as we'll see, you're going to be submitting it um, this. And then this is one of those where you're going to then submit it again for the following module for your peers to review. Okay. And then there's some resources for coaching and editing. Okay. So that's what the learning objectives are for this module. Let's get it on. Okay. So for this module overview, now we talked about coaching and mentoring a little bit last module. And this week we're really focusing more on the coaching aspect of it. Okay. And we'll be doing mentoring is covered more in module six, but there is, while these are related, they are not the same. They are different. And uh, some of you have, you picked up on that in your papers uh, for module three, um, where you talked about the differences between coaching and mentoring. So this one really kind of focuses more on coaching and you know the specifics of that so I'm gonna let you read through that but just be aware that's kind of the focus of this module alrighty moving on here's the module at a glance and again you just kind of go through this um, these are the different things we're just gonna go through all of these so don't worry about spending too much time read on this let's just go ahead and move on okay all right so here's your readings and resources um, how, how 
these two sources here are excellent because if you really want to learn something, you teach it to somebody else. That's that's just kind of a tried and true practice. You really learn something when you try to teach it to somebody else. So um, this is kind of what those um, you know will help you with. So move on from there. Okay, before you get started, there will be an additional lesson, and I'll try to do something that's fun, that kind of hits a point for this module. It'll be in the announcement section. I always try to have this video, you're what you're watching right now, which kind of explains what we're doing, and then an additional lesson, which kind of uh, makes it relatable on, you know, where I give specific examples from my life, because, you know, and that's where, actually, number one, we're asked to do that for the school, uh, just so it's just not like I'm just facilitating something that the school built, but also just kind of, you know, kind of make it relatable. But the, the idea is that, uh, you know, this stuff that we're, we're talking about and dealing with, it has, you know, real life uh, application. So just be aware that there is an additional, you know, video. That, and I try to make those somewhat entertaining so you get something out of it, but learn a lesson at the same time. Alrighty. Okay. Now there is one of these famous, um, non-graded, assignments okay and it's really not bad so you what you do is you you click on this link right here it's the perspective of a coach you click on this scenario just this just gives you a little taste okay so you just click on next you read this okay and then it gives you kind of a scenario and then you know you kind of answer it and then kind of give the uh, feedback yeah so just kind of go through this thing this is kind of a cool thing but go ahead and just do this uh as again it's just a checkbox but it does help with you kind of priming you for the next assignment which we'll be doing which is going to be 5.3 or 5-3 as the case may be. All right, and fun. This one's actually pretty cool. Okay, this is one of those practical things. So we're going to play a little, do a little bit of a role play as a coach. Okay, so imagine for six months you've been helping a client, Emily. Emily, work through the first draft of her novel chapter by chapter. The novel is a psychological thriller from a serial killer's perspective. Chapters 1 through 34 have all been from the protagonist's deep third point version point of view. Woo! 60,000 words in. All right, we're doing doing great. All of a sudden, Emily, bless her, emails you chapter 35, and she has introduced a new character, a soon-to-be victim, and writes the chapter from that character's first person point of view. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so this is the scenario, as it were. So what are you going to do with that? Okay, now pay attention. This is going to be a little, uh, again, we're going to do a little role play here. So the first thing you're going to do, again, this is from the discussion, 5.3, right? Okay, is you will compose an email of about 150 to 200 words to email, to Emily, rather, <laughs> with your advice and suggestions for Chapter 35, okay? So you're basically pretending you are this coach, and what advice would you give to Emily based on this information up here, okay? And now, you will go ahead and just make some assumptions here that uh, of your relationship with Emily, okay? So you, you may know her very well, you may have just met through, you may, may or not met face to face and it's been very professional whatever okay um but just be aware you know, so you make that assumption of what your relationship is and that will be kind of how you phrase this but you still need to address the situation that's up here okay so once you've posted that email then you are going to respond to two of your classmates post as if you were emily okay so pretend that you are emily and you got this feedback that was in the email okay and you may be you know you can create emily is you know very defensive or very open-minded or very flighty i don't know whatever you can decide how you want to have emily be okay maybe base emily on your own personality okay how would you respond to this if you got this email um, based on the information here, okay? And then, you know, if you have time where people respond, then you can kind of say, hey, you know, then overall you can make the general things, hey, I liked your feedback, blah, blah, blah. So, but that's kind of fun. So, again, it's a little role play where we do that, and that's a uh, discussion, okay? And I will kind of pitch in my two uh, cents on each one as much as possible. All right, so that's 5-3. That's a, a graded assignment, Okay. And then we go to 5.4. Now, this is the one that we're going to use also in Module 6. So you need to make sure that uh, Module 6 is something we're going to be, where you're going to post this for other people to do critiques, kind of like we did in Module 4. So let's go ahead and take a look at this assignment, okay? So um, we've kind of started developing our own philosophies on, and approaches to, you know, how we revise work and self-revision, how we give, you know, feedback and stuff like this. Now, for this one, you're going to explain your approach 
and your areas of interest or specialties within the editing and coaching. Okay, so let's say that you were basically were going to, um, you know, promote yourself as an editor and a coach. And you want to basically gotta let people know what to do and, and the approach you're gonna take. So you're gonna do that in the form of a cover letter or or you know like like roll down the street or the stream or no another kind of or anyway either a cover letter or promotional material okay so you can have a little bit of fun with this that uh, you know that, that uses the terminology of the field okay that you're going to provide to clients but you have to be careful and remember who your audience is okay and then again you will get a uh, feedback from your um your peers in the next module and then you're going to make some adjustments to this when we get to module nine okay so what does this cover letter or promotional material need to use well here's the rubric down here okay does it have your pedagogical philosophy would you actually use here is my pedagogical philosophy uh whoa, what does that word even mean okay when people come across words that they don't understand and they're big and whatever um they get t intimidated okay well here's my philosophy and how i'm going to uh be you know my philosophy when it comes to coaching or editing okay basically it's your you know pedagogical is basically just a word for your you know the teaching um, style I guess for lack of a better way of phrasing it okay and then what is your focus or specialty okay so let's say you want to say look I really do high level overview stuff you know where I talk about you know you know whatever or I do line editing or I do copy editing or my specialty is proofreading. Based on all the stuff that we've learned thus far, those different things that we've learned in previous modules, what do you see yourself being, you know, a focus on? You know, maybe you want to just read the whole work and give some general feedback. Maybe you're like, look, I, you know, I do very, I do line editing, and I, you know, I, I'm, you know, this is what I charge or whatever. Okay, um, and make sure you establish your credibility by, uh, you know, by integrating your credentials. Okay, well, some of you are like, I don't have any credentials. Well, yes, you do. You are grad students. Students, you know, in the um, you know, right now, your grad students studying this concept, you know, so you are you are actively studying the concepts of, you know, I've, you know, I am, you know, in, I have done academic work at the graduate level, um, you know, at the graduate level, where it's dealing with editing or copying, or if you've actually done this, where you've done, you know, um, participated in critique groups or whatever, whatever is all about that. So basically, when it comes to grading this, um, what I'm going to be looking for is basically what's going to stay, you know, what is your approach um, to your potential clients, okay? Um, what is your focus or specialties that you like to, you know, that really promote about yourself? What do you really see yourself doing? I would say focus on the positives. Don't say, I don't like doing these things, but I'll do these instead. No, focus on the positives, okay? And establish your credibility by inter inter uh, integrating your credentials and, you know, look ways to phrase that. And then again, your submissions need to make sure that you have proper, you know, whatever. So how long should this be? Well, the cover letter should be one to two pages or the, you know, promotional artifacts such as a flyer, PowerPoint, brochure, or so on okay um, you know just be aware that it's something that we have to make sure that these elements are very clear okay so when it comes to grading them and comes to giving feedback to your uh, fellow classmates we need to make sure that all these points are there and done in a way that it doesn't come across as a class assignment but something that you basically you know it's like a cover letter you would actually give to somebody um, to promote yourself so there is that that is five dash four okay and then we go over to 5-5. Just remember to post, like I said at the beginning of this video, where I have all those resources when it comes to MLA formatting. Make sure you keep posting resources to that uh, thing. And again, that's found under Discussions, and it's found down here all the way to the bottom to 1.3. Okay, and I know there was some confusion. Should I start my own thread? I think the official word is that you just start, you respond to a thread that I created. I've never really seen that done in any of the other courses that I've taught. So if you create your own thread, you've done that in the past, um, that's on me, okay? You won't get marked down. Some of you have been posting uh, responses to threads that I started trying to follow what you should have done what I should have got you to do um, for this particular thing. So again, that was on me. I, again, I just never seen that before and I missed it for this time around. So apologize all around. But again, as long as we have all this information in there and you just keep doing your job, 
you'll be fine. All right. Well, uh, overall, everyone's been doing great, so keep up the good work. Always, uh, if you're going to have challenges with getting work done on time, let me know. If you have questions about assignments, let me know. I am here to help. All right. And have fun with mod.